Thank you for tuning in. In this video, I want to share this pano that I recently shot from Wheeler Peak. I was able to uh, hike this with a few friends. It's one of the tallest summits in New Mexico. And when we got to the uh, summit, I was able to shoot this uh, drone panorama from the summit. And in this video, I want to walk through the process that I'm currently using uh, to stitch this together, to add the fake sky, as well as modify this image or resize it so that it is compatible with uh, Facebook's 360 photo capability. Really uh, a great feature. There's been a lot of talk in the community of the proper dimensions and everything to be able to support that in Facebook. And lastly, I also want to demonstrate just some basic meta tags that you can see here that when you post this to Facebook, it's able to grab the thumbnail and show you just a, a nice preview uh, before you launch into it. Now, there are third-party services that you can use to host these. I prefer to uh, stitch and host them myself. I put these on Amazon's uh, S3 service, but we'll dive into that here shortly. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I've gone ahead and pulled these images off my SD card from the Mavic Pro, uh, shot this with DronePan 2.0, Special thanks to Killian from Switzerland for continuing to develop drone pan and making it better with each release. But you can certainly shoot this pano with DJI Go 4. I will say that while the photos will be good, do not rely on Go 4's uh, built-in panorama stitching. It's, it's rather weak. I highly encourage, if you're interested in this process, to invest in Auto Pano, PT GUI, uh, whatever you prefer as well as Pano Tour if you want to host them yourself. So these are the images. What I'll do now is I'm going to launch Auto Pano Pro. With Auto Pano Pro launched, I will go to this icon and select the images from this Pano. I'm going to select all of them and go ahead and open them. They will be loaded into the app. Now, I would have to say that probably 90% of the time. The default detect process works well for me. I've covered videos on how to uh, move your images around and shift them so that everything works well. But I'm not going to get into that here because I think the common case, assuming you're not dealing with a bunch of wind in the field and you have decent overlap, that AutoPano Pro should do a good enough job. Now, if you're over snow or water, then you might need something like Papy Wizard. But for now, we're going to go with the defaults and I'll show you what that looks like. We'll get a nice preview of the panorama in the right side of the screen. And the next thing we want to do is go into edit mode. And this is where I've covered in previous videos, you can edit image by image and process them, line them up. But I know from this example that everything lines up well looks good. So the next most important thing here is to make sure that we have a full size panorama with a two to one ratio. That's important uh, so that we get all the way up and all the way down uh, preview when we're looking at it in the panorama viewer as well as Facebook requires this two to one uh, width to height ratio. So you can see here we have the full sphere option. I'll select that. We'll get this yellow boundary. I'll make sure I apply that. And then we'll go over to our render settings. And I'm going to, I don't know why that's set at 3%, but we'll go back to um, 100% right here. You can see that our dimensions are large. Uh, there's a two to one ratio there. I have anti-ghost selected uh, defaults here, JPEG and so on. So we'll go ahead and render. This will take a few minutes, but that's okay. We'll come back and then move on to the next step. Here we have the output from AutoPano Pro. You can see it's roughly 20,000 by 10,000 pixels. We'll need to size that down for Facebook, but we'll get to that in a minute. And I just have to add, if you're serious about Panos, this is such a great tool. It's worth the money, uh, makes uh, my life very easy in a lot of cases. So I'll go ahead and zoom in and you can actually see the four of us sitting here beneath the summit and we'll go scroll up there's this black area where we don't have sky what we'll do now is we'll 
we'll get a fake sky image file and we'll layer that in using GIMP. Now this can be done with Photoshop, but I'm going to cover GIMP because it's a free tool uh, that I like to use on my Mac. I've opened the file in GIMP and you can see that we're pretty far zoomed out. Now one thing that I'll recommend doing, I'm going to scale this image down. Now this isn't necessary if you're going to host it yourself, but just for the sake of simplicity in this demonstration, I'm going to bring it down to uh, 16,000 by 8,000. Now that comes out to, I believe, 128 megapixels. And the important thing to note here is I'm on the uh, Facebook 360 photo help page and Facebook specifies that one, photos should be less than 30,000 pixels in any dimensions, and two, they must be less than 135 megapixels. So with a 16 by 8, 16,000 by 8,000, we're at 128 megapixels, which puts us within these limits. So let me go ahead and go back to GIMP. We'll let it finish scaling. It also makes it a little bit easier when you're working with a smaller file size. And to the common eye, most people won't notice the difference. Now let's dive into adding uh, the sky. I used to refer to it as a fake sky, but these are real skies that we have access to that we'll be layering in. And I'd like to find something that's similar in nature to the existing skies. So I'll go over here to this folder. These are some skies that I acquired many years ago. I'm going to zip these and put them in the drone pan group, but also I highly recommend joining the group because we do have a file section. And in this section, there are links to um, some various sources for these skies. Thanks to Mark Brinson uh, for posting those. So what I'll do is take a look through these skies. These right here look to be uh, a little bit early in the day, kind of a morning sunrise. And I shot the pano roughly uh, before noon. So this image here looks fairly similar in terms of uh, format. So I'm going to go ahead and open this in GIMP. What we'll do now is we need to make sure that width-wise and height-wise, this will uh, cover the area in the existing panorama. So I'll go over to image. I'm going to scale image. You can see that it's 14,000 wide. I'm going to make it 16,000 wide just to match the uh, width of the existing panorama image. You'll find that working with these images does require a fair amount of memory, so make sure that you have a computer powerful enough to be able to, to do this. So I'll go to Edit Copy. We'll take that, and then I'm going to paste it in here. This will take a while to draw. I have found that if you zoom in, uh, this process will go faster just because it's not uh, drawing all the pixels on the screen. So we've gone ahead and copied this in. Let me zoom out. The next thing we'll do is I'll go ahead and just select it. I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit. And I'll use my keyboard uh, up arrow just to move this up all the way so that we have uh, all of our black area covered. Now I've shifted this guy up a good bit. Uh, so that all areas are covered. You can see down here there's part of our original sky and then this new sky. We'll go ahead and fade those in, but the first thing I want to do is make sure to make this uh, floating selection its own layer by clicking this icon. And what I'll do now is I'm going to add a layer mask. We'll leave the uh, white full opacity selected then I will select add and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and we can see here that there is this seam. So I'll go over here uh, to the blend tool and now this blending might take a few tries uh, because what you're doing is you're essentially creating a blend from the bottom of the sky up and I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. So I'm just going to click and drag up a fair amount. Now, once again, this is trial and error. Mess around with it. See what the results look like. You can always undo it and do it again. So I'll pick this point. I'll let off. This will take some time to do. The blend operation has completed and I'll just 
sort of pan horizontally. Everything looks really clean. Zoom out a little bit. Let me just select that layer so we don't have that. You can't see any seam there. So I would say just for this demonstration, uh, that's pretty good. Once again, you can mess around with this, see what works. But I think to the common viewer, even to me, I'm looking at this and the sky looks like it was uh, shot on the day that I shot the panorama. The final part of this process will be to go ahead and export as. I could overwrite the original, but I just want to keep that uh, just in case I want to go back and do any sort of modifications. So I'm going to do Wheeler Peak with Sky. Go ahead and export that. GIMP will ask our uh, compression for the JPEG export. I just normally I'm somewhere between uh, 90 and 100. I'll do 90 and go ahead and let that export. Let's take a look at what we have. Here was the original image after it was stitched and exported from AutoPano Pro. And here is the one with our sky. A little bit lower resolution. Once again, we did 16 by 8 but definitely a beautiful looking landscape. Now we can take this image, I'll go over to Facebook and what we can do is whether it's on your profile page or in a group, we can go to the photo uh, video option. I'm going to select the Wheeler Peak image that we just stitched together and the cool thing about AutoPano Pro is it provides the necessary metadata for Facebook to determine that it's a 360 photo. You can see the little 360 icon here. Now people have been having a lot of trouble with this. Once again it's important to remember the uh, dimensions, the 2 to 1 ratio and that we don't want to have anything larger than 135 megapixels. So uh, that will upload. Now we can leave it here but I'm going to uh, take the next step in demonstrating how you can take your 360 panorama and host it yourself. The other tool that I love to use is PanoTour. Once again, you have to make the investment in the software if you're interested in hosting it. There are other options, but I found this to be the most user-friendly, especially if you're doing any sort of uh, custom overlays on your panorama. So I'm going to go ahead and select our Wheeler Peak with Sky Pano that we just exported. And what I'll do is go ahead and select the Pano. And we're just going to use some of the default settings. But I would like to demonstrate that if you recall when we cropped at 360 by 180, you can see that gives us a view all the way down and all the way up. So that's the benefit of doing the two by one. You get the full up and down the 180 degrees vertical. So what you can do here, I'm going to go ahead and just set this as the default view. I'll go ahead and click this icon to set default view. We'll leave that alone and then we'll go over to a control bar. I'm just introducing some of the basic features that I use. There's only one panorama so I'm not going to do previous and next. Uh, the other thing that I think I'll do is I'll remove the help screen as well as uh, change mouse navigation mode. We'll go over to the build tab and I know I'm rushing through this. These are just some of the the basic settings that I like to use. I'll go select the Wheeler Peak folder as the default and I'll just call this index.html. We name it that so that if you're hosting it on S3 or somewhere uh, that will load by default and then all we do now is click build and PanoTour will take care of the rest. We have the output from PanoTour. Once again, let me just make sure that I mention uh, you don't have to go through this step if you're hosting it on a third party. You could take this, upload it, and be done with this. This is only for guys that want to host it and have more control over the process. So out of PanoTour, we have this index.html file and then the index data. This will include a lot of the XML configuration as well as the images uh, that are cubed to make this look spherical uh, for a web viewer. Now, 
One thing you'll notice, when I double click this, my default browser is Chrome, you're going to get an error. There's a security constraint that doesn't allow you to view this in Chrome unless you're running it through a local web server. So uh, that's just a side note. I'm going to open this in Firefox and let's see what happens. Okay, you can see that it's loading and there you go. We have our panorama exported out of Pano Tour and readily available to view. Let me share one last bonus item. Once again, this was uh, a post, somebody asking how to do this in our Facebook group. And you can see that I have the thumbnail here and then the title here. So if we go back to what was generated out of Pano Tour, I'm going to view the source and you're going to want to update the description here the title here, call it whatever you want, obviously something uh, relevant to your panorama. But the other important thing is if you notice we have the thumbnail here and with each project, uh, Panotour will automatically generate a thumbnail, which is awesome. But uh, for that to be displayed in uh, social networks such as Facebook, there are certain uh, metadata properties that need to be added. So you can see here that I have both these two properties, the uh, OG colon image and the link image source. And those both point to uh, the thumbnail that was created by Panotour. I uploaded these to S3. This could be your own web server. And let me just go ahead and click on one. Uh, you can see the thumbnail here. So those uh, meta tags are very important if you want to have a proper preview uh, for others to see before they click through uh, to view the full panel. All right, guys, I know that was a lengthy video, but I wanted to share my current workflow of what I've learned over the past few years. Obviously, the, the drones are getting better, cameras are getting better, and I've also worked to improve just my post-processing workflow uh, to generate hopefully some decent panoramas. If you guys have any questions or comments about this process, please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.